A part of me feels pretty exposed in this period of my life, like I am being unmasked and delayed down to my very core. It has felt vulnerable and a bit frightening to be meeting such hidden aspects of myself that I have long since forgotten. And to be greeting them with compassion is simultaneously so healing and so heartbreaking. There is a special kind of strength that is found in this fragility. A leaf freshly unfurled, vibrant and tender, newly upturned soil ready to sprout new life soft and exposed, my heart cast open and willing, ready to receive a new capacity for love and in turn grief. When stripped bare in this way, a gift is presented to us, a time to lay foundations. And so I've been navigating the appropriate steps in order to create those strong foundations, clearing the ground, preparing the area, building a frame, mixing the materials, so that when it comes time to adding the final touches, I am steady and confident in all that is to come. And once those foundations are laid, trusting in them to support and balance all that is laid upon it, Sometimes part of your growth is re-meeting yourself where you are and understanding that where you are is at the beginning again. And instead of feeling disheartened by it, to be excited by this new chapter, allowing yourself to rebuild from the ground up, knowing that there is so much more to come. Honestly, I just freaking love driving through the countryside. <laughs> I think it's just like the most like soothing thing and it's like the easiest thing that you can do. Like you don't even have to, you just like to get in your car and go and you can just drive around and feel immediately at peace. Like put the window down, especially on a day like today. It's such a beautiful sunny day today and it was so good just to feel like the sun on my face and just to be somewhere new as well. I'm down in Hamilton at the moment. I came down last night to go to my friend Shard's sound bath that she did at Ara Studios and it was just super magical, super super magical and then like I stayed at her house last night and I just went for a drive while she had an appointment this morning and about to meet her to have some lunch slash breakfast. I haven't really had breakfast yet, it's 12.30. Um, but we're outside this place called Frank's, gonna go get a bite and uh, yeah, just hang out. It's gonna be a good time. Oh, Daniel's calling me. She's a superstar. She's shiny. <laughs> She's glowing. <So> shiny. <laughs>
Good morning, good morning. Just got done doing a fabulous little morning routine. It's taking me a little bit longer to get through my morning routine because I've now incorporated in some like rehabilitation exercises to help my low back. The exercises that I am doing is real gentle deadlifts with like an eight kilo kettlebell and then also just working on any like core strengthening exercises, incorporating a bit of squats in there as well. Again, just with the eight kilo dumbbell, so nothing too like intense, but just enough to like get some activation and strength back into those parts of my body. And the reason why I am doing that is because when you think about it, like your spine sits here, your glutes and your hamstrings are all back here. They're one of your, they are your biggest muscle in your body, the glutes and then like the hamstrings as well. So if you strengthen those as well as strengthen your core, you're kind of taking it from both angles to create this really like solid firm structure so that your spine can be really well supported in the center. So that's why I'm doing that. I've been really struggling to do a full yoga practice. I do a couple of like stretches in the morning and I run through like a little bit of a yoga flow on my own, but I'm just like struggling to keep pace with like a full on class. And I find that if I try to do a class and I'm not slowing down in the way that I need to, I'm just more prone to like tweaking my back a little bit. I haven't really done a yoga class in a long time. I've just been doing like a little stretch in the morning, um, a little mini yoga flow, if you will, and incorporating some like glute bridges and core strengthening exercises into that. Today was my first day of doing the kettlebells, but I'm gonna try and do some kettlebells just to strengthen my hamstrings and my glutes up a little bit. And so I feel like the more I can build up that strength, then the quicker it's gonna help to heal because I'm like, giving it a nice solid foundation and some good support. It's Monday today, so it's kind of the day for me to really sink back into like my rhythms and routines. This weekend I went down to Hamilton to visit Shard and it was so beautiful. I honestly felt like I was in the Shire. <laughs> like it was just like Hamilton, I feel like is actually way more beautiful than New Zealanders give it credit for. Like the countryside out there, so stunning. But also I need to um, plan some classes because I'm teaching at Sala again tomorrow. I've got a private in the morning and then I actually have like a permanent time slot at Sala now. So Tuesday is still from seven till 8 p.m. in the evenings. That's my time slot. So I don't know if you're in New Zealand, but if you are and if you're in Auckland area and you want to come flow with me, there's your place to do that. Oh my God, look at this dog. Yeah, you got all the cozy there. Is that a cozy spot? <laughs> and I'm just gonna go and sit down at my desk and do a little bit of work. Do you want some coffee? Yeah. What? You can make more. You can get a shot of making coffee. Have you drunk in all the coffee already? I'm helping you make content. <sighs> <laughs>
is one of the greatest perks of being self-employed. So you can come to a climbing gym at like 10 o'clock in the morning and no one is here. And you just have all of the walls to yourself. So I am just editing the video that you just watched and realized that I did not film an outro. I honestly just stopped filming. Like after that last clip, I just stopped filming for like three or four days. I honestly just needed some time just to feel like a little bit sorry for myself and just like to feel everything out. I also got sick, so that's why I'm a little bit like sounding, but I've just been navigating a death and rebirth cycle. I think I'm going to get into this in the next video that I post because like I've only kind of just started to be able to vocalize what the hell I've been going through the last couple of weeks I feel. And it's interesting because every seven years, I don't know if you've heard this thing, like every seven years all of your cells in your body like regenerate. Your body is like entirely new every seven years and every seven years I swear to god I always go through like a major death and rebirth cycles. There's like little ones throughout, but a major one happens every seven years. I actually was like, huh, I wonder when my last like big seven year death and rebirth cycle was. I looked it up, it was 2015. So here we are. <laughs> here we are going through another one. And it's been so intense because this is the first one that I've gone through since my spiritual awakening. And so it's the first one that I'm doing consciously. And it's been so interesting and just such a wild ride because there's like a major like purge that happens of like all the shit that I need to like let go of so that I can be like rebirthed into my next evolution <laughs> of self and all of the things that I need to purge out just come rippling up to the surface and so it's usually like a lot of my like old coping mechanisms come up because I've either like gone into like an intense depressive episode, um, gone like really stonewall to like a lot of people including myself like I just want to like cut myself off from everyone and everything and I just want to push everyone away that's a big one and then also my ED sometimes relapses but this is the first one that I feel like I'm going through where I am coming at it from this point of the witness and it's not perfect every single time sometimes I will have like thoughts or feelings that come up that do consume me for a little bit but then usually I can like take a back step out and be like, what the hell was that, man? <laughs> like, the biggest help has just been coming back to the practices that just anchor me in the present because it's all been a lot of just trying to avoid and resist where I currently am. And it's felt chaotic and messy and intense and those are all things that I just don't want to feel like usually I'm like clutching for control and so when things feel shaken up and I feel like everything is unstable I just want to like grasp on to the things that I do feel like I have control over and which are like the usually the things that are familiar your coping mechanisms that feel familiar to you are going to feel like the safest but they're not usually the best for you so yeah, it's been quite intense to be navigating that and to be okay with things being chaotic and messy and just still coming back to the present moment and to connecting in with self and source and I've just been trying to get onto my mat and really be present on my mat. I've been trying to get back into regularly meditating, um, breath work has been huge to just keep me really anchored in, especially since I haven't been able to step on my mat in the usual way because of all my injuries that I've been having. This idea of foundations has just been so prevalent in the last two weeks. I feel like it's been like a little love letter from the universe of just telling me like you're in this phase at the moment where things are starting to, things are dying, but then things are also being reborn. And the beautiful thing about this death and rebirth phase is that it is giving you so much space to look at everything, scatter it out. You kind of have to spill everything out and be able to look at everything and go, where do I want to start from and how can I build a foundation that is going to support the next evolution of myself? And so that's kind of what I, where I've been feeling into is like this idea of foundations. And it's just been 
this beautiful opportunity of really like starting from scratch almost and building from the ground up if you will and really coming back to the things that I want to have as my foundations for everything that I do moving forward. So yeah, that's it. Everything feels a little bit chaotic and messy and so I feel like I'm articulating it very like chaotically. So I don't know if this, any of this makes sense but that's just where I am at the moment and I am learning to be okay with things being chaotic and messy instead of me trying to like speed track my healing process and go from like being in this phase to feeling like I need to automatically jump to it being like sorted out and healed and finalized and instead less like being okay with the current place that I'm in, which is a little bit chaotic. <laughs> um, but it's fine, it's actually kind of fun because it gives you just like so much more freedom to be like, okay, like things are just like, things are just as they are now and it's, it's actually okay. So what a way to end this video, but I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. It really supports me and helps me out. Oh my god, that's yawn so cute. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. It really does support me and helps me out a bunch with the YouTube algorithm. And subscribe if you haven't. And I'll see you next time. I love you lots. Thank you so much. And yeah, have a good one.